Hello! Many of you liked my video about a house in Desantne village that you can watch right here if you haven't already done so. And today I want to show you another house in Poltava region with a big garden and a huge land plot where you can plant anything you want, maybe grow trees or even make a resort, like a retreat for people who look to escape from town into the village. And maybe to experience a couple of days, let's say to recharge their batteries in the countryside away from town. Price of this house together with garden and with this huge land plot was extremely ridiculously low. And that is why it has been sold in about one week after it has been advertised for sale. I will tell you the price of this house at the end of this video, but there are many other houses for sale in this region, as well as in this village and in nearby villages. So, if any of you would want to buy a house in the village, maybe not like this one, but would be possible to find maybe even a bargain price as well, there are many other houses that are for sale and that will be for sale in the future. This house is located in Horoshki village in Poltava region. And this is one of those villages that, let's say, is not decreasing in population, but population of this village is increasing a little bit. Some people are moving from cities to the village, and this village is one of such villages, let's say. Life in village is cheaper compared to the city, and many people now try to market ecological way of living, and many people, especially in Carpathian region, may be renting a room in their house to tourists. Some build a small house with several rooms for tourists on their land plot, and may money like this, because, especially now with all this situation in the world, more and more people travel locally in Ukraine. And demand in such rooms and village houses will be only increasing in the next years. There is a river running through this village where this house is located, there is a forest next to this village, and the river is pretty clean because there are no factories that are located nearby this village. And, as I said before, population of this village is not declining it increases a little bit. Location of this Horoshki village is right in the center of Ukraine, with very, very good black soil, and the distance, for example, from Borispil airport is 225 kilometers. From Kiev city, from the capital of Ukraine, it is 255 kilometers. From Kharkiv city, it is 300 kilometers away, and from the nearest city, which is called Lubny, it is 50 kilometers. But you can see that it takes more than one hour to drive from Horoshki village to this Lubny city, because roads to that village are not very good. But there is a bus connection and two buses each day go to Horoshki from Lubny and come back from Horoshki village to Lubny city. Some of you may say, well, bad road to the village, it's a very, very big disadvantage, but I would say that it is more of an advantage than a disadvantage. Write me in comments, why do you think it is a disadvantage, and why do you think it is an advantage to have a bad road to the village? And I will answer to this question in one of my next videos. Enough of words, let's see the review of this house. But before we get to the review, please check if you are subscribed to my channel and be sure to like this video if you really like it and find it interesting for you. It would motivate me to record more videos for you in the future. And of course, please write me in comments all the questions that you might have about village life in Ukraine. Okay, enough of words, let's see the review of the house. You will see an overview of a house in Horoshki village, which is in Poltava region. You will see everything, the house from the inside, the surroundings, the garden, and you will find out what are these covers that you see on the windows. That's pretty interesting and pretty unusual solution. Total area of this land plot where this house is built, together with garden and with everything, more than 5,000 square meters and about 60,000 square feet. Owner of the house, whose name is Lida, will show us the house. 
when you enter a house you're getting right into veranda and lady says that it's their favorite place in the summer because it is not so hot here even in the fall in the spring you can close this window and it's pretty comfortable to stay here this ladder that you see is an entrance to an attic which is pretty big and you can store a lot of things there right here is a small storage room where owner has just installed new wooden shelves and as you can see they store everything here advantage of this room is in that if you don't even switch on the heating nothing will freeze here because temperature, no matter how cold it is outside, never falls here below zero degrees. You can see that this room has about 8 square meters, which is a little bit less than 100 square feet. And since there is no bathroom inside the house, you can actually replan it and instead of this storage room, make a bathroom. We are entering the house itself. We see a small hallway, which is 9 square meters, about 100 square feet. And it's very interesting how woman calls this room. She says, Prihoshka. That's in a cute way to call a hallway. So like little small hallway. They have a refrigerator here. They get dressed, undressed in this room. And at the entrance in this hallway in the kitchen, they have put tiles on the floor, which is pretty unusual for village houses. Usually floors are all wooden. You can see that refurbishing has been made not so long ago and the condition is pretty pretty good of this house. Next room is a kitchen, which is pretty small, only 7.5 square meters, about 85 square feet. And they already have natural gas connection to this house. And this automatic gas switch has been installed, which helps to save natural gas in the winter. It regulates and cuts off the gas when it is hot in the house. And configured in such way that in the house it is all day long about 22 degrees Celsius, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Height of the ceilings is 2.8 meters, which is a little bit more than 9 feet, which is also pretty high and comfortable. This particular shelf on the wall is in Ukrainian called Mysnik. In Russian sometimes they call it Sudnik. That's a special shelf, usually handmade, and is usually installed in kitchens and people put kitchenware, dishes, spoons, forks there. This is a bigger room, which they call as a hall. It is 14 square meters, around 160 square feet. And you can use it as a living room, for example. Owner has installed tiles on this wall, because it's much more convenient and much more effective to heat it during the winter. They had wallpaper here before, but tiles is much more effective. The second room is their bedroom. It is 10 square meters, about 110 square feet. As you can see, it is also heated with this gruba, which can be heated with natural gas or with wood or with coal. There are no any radiators, no need for any electrical pump to pump the water around these radiators. Wooden floors covered with linoleum. So house is not big, it consists of two rooms, a bedroom, a bigger hallway, a small hallway, which you can actually also call a room, a kitchen, and a woman says that documents, everything is okay with the documents. Land has been privatized, house is privatized, and the whole land plot is not half of an acre, it is 0.59 of an acre, because they have half of an acre just a garden, which she will show you in a minute, and 900 square meters, which is about 10,000 square feet, is for the house and the so-called land right next to the house. One big disadvantage is that there is no water connection to the house. So there is no water like inside the house, but you can connect it without any problems. We are getting out of the house and there are two wells, which you will see in a second. Some words about these windows and what do you see about these covers. 
These are like small wooden boxes which are filled with hay. A long time ago, maybe a hundred or a hundred and fifty years ago, people used to keep warmth inside their houses. Even though it's still some light inside the house, but it keeps warmth very, very good. And they do not even take them off during the summer, because in the summer it helps keep the house cool and protects windows against ice rain, which are pretty common these days because of the climate change. This is the first well, and in this well it is the so-called first water, the water which is not used for drinking, but you can use it for watering plants, washing, cleaning, and some other agricultural works maybe. So, for everything but not drinking. This house is almost in the center of the village. Right across the road there is a kindergarten and five minutes walking distance from the nearest shop and five minutes walking distance from the bus station and there are actually two bus stops here. So five minutes walking distance to the first one and five minutes walking distance to a second bus stop. So location of the house is just perfect. And here they have a second well with a so-called second water. And this water is suitable for drinking. You don't need any filters, you just take water out of from there and you drink it. It is 17 meters deep, about 60 feet deep. And they have an electric pump, which pumps water right from this well. Pump has been already installed here from the very beginning. Right here you can see a so-called barn. It used to be a workshop of this owner, of a man who was living here. New shelves have been installed not so long ago, and he used to store many things here. Previous owners had a summer kitchen here, but when they bought this land and this house, they built a new summer kitchen and made this as a barn and a workshop. Here is a bigger barn, or you can call it a storage area, where they store everything imaginable. Pretty big, as you can see. Previous owners had a cow here and uh, used to store a lot of hay. But since these owners didn't have any cow, they rebuilt it a little bit and they remodeled all this barn and built it out of bricks. Because previous owners had it half wooden, half from limestone, but they built it all from bricks. Third part of this barn has been built for chickens. And this woman also says that they had ducks, they had geese, and they all lived in this barn. This is like a house for pigs, and it is brand new, they built it only several years ago. And woman explains that this uh, sash, this house for pigs, is divided into two parts. One part is for big pigs, and other part is for small pigs. Roof is of also very good quality, you see no holes, nothing. Father of this lady made everything by himself, all by his hands. This place was only for small chickens. They used to feed them in the summer and when it is not cold outside. And here they have a small tree garden. They have three plum trees, two cherry trees, three apple trees, two apricot trees, and they were growing this garden by themselves. So it was not here before when they bought this place. And in such way that all fruits are there grown. They don't buy anything from anywhere. While they are walking to the cellar, check out how good territory is, how well looked after it is. And I know pretty well how much time and how much work is needed to keep it up like this. 
This is a so-called cellar, which is a must for every village house. Pretty deep cellar and very dry cellar. So you can store absolutely anything here, and now they will show why it is so dry. Because usually in cellars there is moisture, they are wet, but this one is very, very dry, and you will see why it is dry. This cellar has double roof. The so-called neck of the cellar has one roof, and the cellar itself was covered with a thing called tirsa. That's something like sawdust. When people make some wooden stuff and when they have all these remainings, so sawdust with these remainings, this is called tirsa. And they covered it with this tirsa and they even built additional roof. So that cellar is very, very well protected from moisture. And her father did it all by himself, all with his hands. And here is the new summer kitchen. You can quickly see these men and women, and this man built everything here by his hands, all by himself. But as you can see, he is very old, together with his wife, and he cannot live in the village anymore. He has to move to the city. And they have a small stove. It is also very, very warm here in the winter. This grandfather likes to sleep here all the time, because it is warm. Another small storage room right next to the kitchen, and it is very, very dry. A lot of place for storage. They even store corn here, and there are no problems at all with that. It is also very warm, because that kitchen is heated very well, and that left wall is always warm. There is no moisture, there is no anything wet in this storage room ever. Man says that everything is dry, walls are straight, and it is one of the well-thought houses that he has seen in villages. And this woman says yes, because her father built it all by himself, all by his own hands. And how very well thought, how everything is clean, tidy, well kept in this house, and on the territory next to the house. Some of you ask, where is the toilet in the village? And you can see right there, built out of bricks, a so-called street toilet. Yes, toilet is on the street. This is an apple tree that was here when they bought this house from the very beginning. And pride, special pride of this family is their garden or land that is used and that they own for growing their garden. You can see how big this land plot is for the garden. All the way up to those trees, and actually all those trees act as a fence of this land plot. And all this land plot belongs to this family. So, once again, it is 5,000 square meters, which is about 55,000 square feet or 1.25 of an acre. Land is privatized, soil it's black soil of very, very good quality, and you can grow almost everything. Just you need people or good health to grow it all. Land is right next to the house, next to the well. You don't have to drive anywhere, you just wake up and work in the field, in your field. And now you will see the street, and just look how tidy and how well kept everything is. I am really amazed at that, because I know how much time and how much energy is needed to keep it all like that. Lady says that there are two bushes of Kalina. I will put an English name to it, because I have no idea how to translate it. It's a berry which is very, very good for your health. This is the main street and the main road. House is right in the center of the village. Location is very, very good. And you can see that the road has been paved. It's not like you drive on village ground roads, even though the road to this village is not good. And they show the address of the building, street Novaya 1. Street is called New, number 1. 
And in conclusion, what can be said? Cellular internet 4G from two operators, two shops in the village, a post office, 45 kilometers to the closest city or 30 miles, and price of the house with land, with everything, is $2,000. Only $2,000, correct. And let's see the building with the surroundings once again. And when I look at it, I just imagine how much love and how much effort has been put to keep everything so beautiful. What do you think of such house with a garden and such huge land plot? And correct, the price of all this, of the house, of everything that you saw, of the garden, and of this huge land plot is only two thousand dollars yes two thousand american dollars just for your information price of one brick in ukraine if you buy it wholesale is 49 cents okay that's price of a good brick you would say how much does the cheapest brick in ukraine cost let's see it is 24 cents if you buy it wholesale from 1000 pieces but that's brick of not good quality and that house and everything that you saw there the barn the summer kitchen the street toilet have been built from brick which is of much better quality than the cheapest one so you can consider that brick good brick in ukraine costs about half of a dollar but that is just price of a brick price without delivery without cement without labor that is needed to build this house and build everything without digging without making a foundation just the price of the brick and here you get for two thousand absolutely everything including such big land plot it is just amazing the price is just very low it's ridiculously low and house including land had all privatized documents which is a very very great advantage and usually people in villages are much nicer they are very kind they are polite for example this lady look how polite she is she said to her father Didusiu, Сядьте, сядьте, не бігайте. And that's a polite way to speak to a person. And when we talk to parents, usually, we talk to them in friendly way. We don't talk to them in such polite way. And in villages, they do talk in such polite way, mostly. People respect uh, their parents very, very much. It is more of an official way to talk to a person, to show how you respect this person. And this lady addresses to her father in such polite way and uh, this is something that you will never see in the city and also very interesting how people in ukrainian villages speak take a look this woman says дуже дуже вкусні and that's a mix of ukrainian and russian дуже means very so very very Tasty, she says, but she uses the word вкусни, and there is no such word in Russian. There is a word вкусный, and in Ukrainian we have a word смачный, but here we have to put it in plural, so in plural it would be вкусные in Russian, and in Ukrainian it would be смачни, but she says вкусни. So it's mixture of smachni and вкусные. And there are many such words. So if you would want to live maybe in a village, you would have to learn several hundreds of Ukrainian words as well as several hundreds of Russian words. Even though in this video I said that it is not necessary to learn Russian, but if you would want to live in a village, you would have to learn maybe 500 Russian words and 500 Ukrainian words, just to understand what people are saying to you and basically to communicate with people in the village, because in villages you have to communicate with your neighbors. That's just a must if you want to live in a village. 
I sincerely hope you liked this video, and if you really liked it, please like it. In comments, please feel free to ask any questions you may be interested about village life in Ukraine, maybe village houses, maybe land in the village, roads, transport, whatever. Just ask questions and I will be glad to record a Q&A video if there will be a lot of questions. Those of you who would be interested maybe to buy such house with land and maybe live there part-time or permanently, please write me in comments also, or you can email me at my email address, and I will think of some way how it would be possible to show you such houses, because realtors do not work with such houses. They don't work with owners of village houses, because realtors try to get as much commission as possible. And with village house, it may be like maybe $200 maximum. But the amount of work that has to be done is much greater than to sell any apartment in the city. So, realtors are not interested in selling these village houses at all. But if there will be many of you who would be interested in this, I will think of some way to find a solution to this problem. So, please write me in comments or write me at my email address. As usual, you can email me at my email address if you need my personal assistance, consultation or advice, and I am always glad to help those people who really need help. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video. I wish you all success, good luck, prosperity, tranquility, and of course, stay healthy and wealthy.